How's it going, Summoners? So and welcome back to another Pro Guides Wild Rift video. My name is Nathan Ng, and today we're going to be talking about how you can snowball your games. If you're tired of losing after a 20 minute struggle, then make sure you watch this video. The very beginning of every game is a solid champion selection phase. A lot of the champions in Wild Rift cannot be blind picked into all matchups. They simply struggle too much into certain matchups. To avoid such problematic situations, you want to be blind picking champions that are at least decent into most matchups. For this case, we can only recommend Fiora at all times, even though a lot of players see Garen as a counterpick to her. However, in reality, this would only be the case if the player piloting Fiora is significantly worse than the Garen player. Fiora must know what she can do and what she can't. Any mistake on her end will lead to a painful experience in lane. Nevertheless, identifying the correct repost windows and the proper sequencing of spells will give her the edge into many exchanges. For example, once Fiora hits 50% HP, Garen can just hit his first ability to silence her into an ignite and ultimate. If Fiora doesn't repose a decisive strike in this scenario, she'll just die while being silenced. Look at your own counterplay and think about how to utilize it in all situations. Oh, and by the way, Fiora's cooldown on her second ability is twice as long on the PC version since it's absolutely broken, so make sure you make use of it. Luckily enough, we aren't forced to blind pick all the time anymore. Bright introduced the swap pick feature and it can be great to secure either the most OP champion on the current patch or to avoid terrible matchups in general. Next time you're in select and you have to first pick Baron lane, try Fiora or ask to swap the pick order and see how well it goes. Before we continue with today's video, make sure you check out the Discord in the description below. Giveaways, regular events, and an active chat are always waiting for you there, so make sure you stop by and look for yourself how it feels to be part of the Pro Guides family. Now that we've dealt with the pre-game thoughts, we're going straight into the game itself. Every game starts with the laning phase, and if you want to snowball your game, you want the best one possible. To achieve that feat, you want to learn about the identity of your champion. What makes them strong and what are they vulnerable to? Let's start off with one of our favorites, Riven. Her laning phase is a very oppressive one. For level 1, you want to stay close to the melee minions and patiently wait for the enemies to try to last hit them. The moment they go for them, you relentlessly weave your auto attacks and your first ability to inflict some serious damage. Most players don't know about the power dynamics, they'll just run up to the wave and last hit those, and that's exactly what you could use to your own advantage. Now let me let you in on a little secret here. Both Riven and Irelia are crazy fun and good at the same time. Irelia is a powerhouse in terms of DPS and is quite scary to face her in lane. But there is one thing that Irelia cannot do, contesting the first wave against a Riven. Irelia is not allowed to challenge the first wave as she is not strong enough due to her abilities in comparison to Riven's. Irelia's goal would be to sit back and get to level 3 and then start playing the lane. Doing so earlier can lead to a very quick death which spells doom for her laning phase. Essentially, you want to know what your champion's strengths and weaknesses are and their power spikes. From Riven's perspective, you want to push the waves as slow as possible. Ideally, you want to crash the first cannon wave and get in a cheater recall. Now, the fourth wave will bounce towards your tower and if you're fast enough, you may freeze the next wave again. And here's the real kicker. Even if you don't kill her with that strategy, you're slowly bleeding her dry in terms of resources. She'll have less gold and less XP than you, and you'll always be in a favorable position in terms of wave management. And don't forget the unwritten rule about the Baron lane. If you die once, your laning phase is usually over and it will be very, very difficult for you to come back against players that are equally skilled as you or better. Now, let's take a look at this matchup from Irelia's point of view. As we've already established, Irelia is not allowed to get too close to the wave. Consequently, Irelia has no real need to skill her first ability. Rather than doing so, Irelia can put a point into her third ability to get a few CS from range to mitigate the incoming pressure. However, don't let yourself get baited into being too greedy for a few minions. Trust me, if you get too close, you will die or lose a ton of your HP, which will create a possibility of you being dove or losing everything. After level 3, you're allowed to play as you gain access to all your abilities, and now the matchup is more about individual skill. Knowing what to use and why to use it in certain situations will tilt the matchup in either direction. Now, let's take a break for our question of the day. Do you have a special strategy you like to use in your ranked games? If so, let us know in the comments down below. For me personally, I just like taking breaks and drinking boba. That makes me feel better. And play better. Next up, and directly linked to the laning phase, is finding those good reset opportunities. Do you remember the wave advice in the prior segment? If you cannot kill the enemy there, then just recall. Now you have a few options at hand that you may choose from. One would be to go back to your lane and see what you can do from there. The other option would be to make a play around the map. To get the information required to do such a play, you need to check the state of the map. What is happening around you and what are your options? If you spot a good opportunity to get in a decent room, you can do so. Otherwise, you just focus on your own lead to carry the game. Another undervalued thing about recalls is tracking the gold that you need for an item or a certain component of said item. Let's go back to the example with Riven. If you manage to get a cheater recall after the first cannon wave without missing minions, then you'd be able to buy a Sheen. What many players don't know is the fact that Sheen is a pretty powerful buy for Riven, especially as a one component power spike. 
Sheen's effect grants you 100% bonus AD damage on your next attack after using a spell on a 1.5 second cooldown. With this, you have to stretch out your combo to get the maximum efficiency. However, this can be very difficult and it really does depend on your timing to get most of the damage out of this combo. An easier alternative would be buying a phage and then keeping the extra 300 gold in your pocket for later use. Factually speaking, the Sheen purchase is the biggest power spike that you can get from a single component, but it doesn't scale as well with their other item options. Nevertheless, if you're confident in your ability of pulling it off consistently, you can try out the Trinity Force route. Otherwise, it's more than okay to always default to Black Cleaver. With that in mind, we have to start identifying our win condition. In some games, you'll realize that you're not the star of the show and you have to sit back and let yourself get carried. But how do you know when that is the case? Let's say that your entire team is making a play on the other side of the map and a lot of the enemy champions are missing. In those situations, you have to be patient. Where are the enemy champions and what can they do if they gank me? If you come to the conclusion that you can kill them all, then sure, go for it. Otherwise, sit back, farm your own jungle, and don't expose yourself to unnecessary risk. Your team is already winning on one side of the map, and now the enemy team needs to respond to that by making a play on your side. Don't fall for it, and don't give them a way back into the game. But what would you do if your team is already losing? Depending on how hard your team is losing, you're forced to make difficult decisions. For one, you can think of ways to get more gold. Split pushing, farming jungle camps, or temporarily freezing waves to get as much gold as possible while being as safe as possible are just all the default options that you can think of. On the other hand, you have to get more creative the worse the game looks. Open up the scoreboard, check the stats, and see for yourself if the game is in a bad spot. So let's say your team is 10 kills to 40 kills. I mean, this looks pretty bad. Consequently, if the game plays out normally, you'd lose eventually. However, now it's on you to find ways of breaking out of that pickle. Trapping the enemy inside a jungle and brushes or baiting them into a side lane while your team shadows you are viable options. Also, adjusting your items early on can be a determining factor. Continuing the Black Cleaver Trinity Force discussion from earlier, both items serve a different purpose. Black Cleaver grants great team fighting power not only for you, but for your teammates as well. It's a cheap item that's only bought on very specific champions due to its unique limitations. In comparison to that, we have Trinity Force, a powerful tool for split pushing or finishing off targets in isolated 1v1 situations. It's far more expensive than Black Cleaver, but also has better components in terms of early power spikes. For example, the Sheen. Therefore, Trinity Force would raise your potency in the split pushing department, whereas Black Cleaver grants you more impact for a cheaper price in team fighting situations. So, do you want to build for lane or for the game? It all depends on you and how your team is performing. Get thinking and don't just blindly follow the build on the current rank 1 player or on your favorite pro guides videos. Those are just baselines and you can do whatever you want with it. Make sure you change accordingly. Next up on the list is confidence in your own abilities of making plays. Every champion can be put into different categories. They are either mechanically challenging or easy to pilot. A Garen is certainly easier than playing a Riven. There is not much room for discussion here. With that in mind, you have to think about the different possibilities that you have when you're playing those champions. Making sure that you have enough practice to actually pull off those combos that you need to carry the games is one of the most fundamental ideas in the game. Just hop into the practice tool and see what your champion can do and how you can use that to your own advantage. In the context of laning, this can be very useful, as you're able to quickly punish any mistakes that you see. Even as the game goes on, the principle remains the same. Some champions are allowed to be more aggressive than others without putting themselves at risk. Therefore, knowing what those champions can do is certainly helpful when it comes to identifying bad plays that you can punish at your own discretion. I like to think of this as limit testing. You know, you just go in and see how many people you could kill. Or maybe it's called inting. I don't know. Same thing, really. I've seen a lot of ADCs walk up in the later stages of the game when there's a Nikali around. You simply can't do that and expect to survive, but you know, limit testing. Last but not least comes the most terrifying part about Wild Rift. Objectives. Or Jungle Diff. Just kidding, we're going to be talking about objectives. We all know that they're either going to break you or the enemy team's mental. But here's something that most players don't know about them. You don't have to contest all objectives at all times. Sometimes it's completely fine to give up early dragons and trade for collecting more gold. In theory, dragons are nothing else but stats, and stats can be bought with gold. Consequently, the dragon stats matter much more as the game goes on. However, it's not worth losing thousands of gold fighting an unwinnable fight, and then losing the dragon anyway. Rather, focus on collecting the gold on the other side of the map to snowball yourself into a position where you can carry. Afterwards, you're probably in a better position to contest anything that you wish. Nevertheless, you have to be careful when it comes to wasting cooldowns prior to an objective spawn. Using a multitude of ultimate abilities and summoner spells 40 seconds before a major objective spawn can be detrimental to your game. If the enemy team keeps track of that and forces you into a fight where your spells are still on cooldown, you're very likely to lose that fight and you're going to have a very, very bad time. So don't get baited. Let's do a quick summary of the key points that we've talked about. To snowball your games, you want an optimal laning phase in terms of wave control, trading patterns, and recall timings. 
Afterwards, you want to see if you can transition your lead to other lanes by actively looking for roam windows after finding perfect recalls. While you're doing so, you have to constantly assess the game state to buy the best possible items for either your team or just yourself depending on what you think the win condition is. As you've properly assessed the state of the game, you need to make judgment calls when it comes to objectives. Do you want to contest them or do you want to take something else and just trade? Anyway, that concludes today's video on snowballing games and solidifying your own lead in the game. Thank you guys so much for watching, leave a like and subscribe to the channel to never miss any content like this. Don't forget to reply to our question of the day down in the comments below and see you guys next time for another Pro Guides video. As always, my name has been Nathan Ng, stay safe, stay healthy and have a wonderful day. Peace.